now this is numbers chapter 12 verse 3 this is book of numbers chapter 12 verse 3 this is about prophet moses you can repeat now the man moses was very humble more so than anyone else on the face of the earth sisters and brothers the word of god says talking about a man and we know the word of god is truth about a man called moses and a comment about this man is that he was so humble meek and gentle and we know that this man moses killed someone he was a murderer he was a short-tempered man he was very aggressive person he was a person who had gone through a lot of rejection, abandonment and being such a personality, how he became the most humble on the whole world. Jesus, our God, made it possible. Clap for your God. Maybe you are accused of being aggressive, being arrogant, being stubborn, getting angry for small things. The same God who transformed Moses is here in this altar. He can transform your lives too and make you as a very gentle, polite, humble person. Such power belongs to our God. Believe it. He can transform us. He has transformed people in the history in the past and he will do the same because hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 we read jesus christ is the same yesterday today and forever there is no one who is the same yesterday today and forever that means the one who transformed moses is the same today to transform you and me believe it hallelujah. hallelujah what we need to do when we have a problem our character is we hide it or we avoid it we don't deal with it if we have something that we think it will hurt us we keep it under the carpet but we know one day it is to be revealed if you have a if you find a dog barking and if you run away the dog will come back and bite you but if you face this barking dog straight and you go ahead straight to the dog it will run away if you run away from your problems the problems will come back to bite you face it because Jesus said, this is John chapter 8, verse 36. If the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Praise the Lord. Praise Our marriages are breaking. Our relationships are breaking. And our problems are increasing because of hidden inner wounds. We are all wounded. Our problem is... We don't know there is someone who can heal us. Hiding can never give us healing. Even if you have a wound in your body, and if you don't take out that pus, that every painful memory out very clear and clean, you will not get healing, even physically. It is the same even emotionally. Praise the Lord. Let me start with my own life example. I had the problem of suppressed anger. Suppressed anger means I don't get angry always. But if I get angry, I may even beat. One day when I was in the school, I got very angry with one of my friends. I closed my eyes and I hit him so much and he fell down. Today I'm very sorry for that because those days I had real suppressed anger. Most of the time I smile. So people think I'm all right. But when something 
adverse something that is not to my nature happens, then I get violent. Because suppressed anger means you suppress your feelings inside. But when an opportunity comes, it will come out. It's in the same way, even in our personal lives, even in marriages, maybe you're all right for so many years, then all of a sudden something triggers and you become another person. That means you have not yet received healing from all the hidden gray areas of your life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If anybody who has a relationship problem with the father, if you are wounded by your father, generally, not everybody, generally, if you are wounded by your father, you don't like anyone in authority. You find corrections are very painful. You run away from people who are trying to dominate you or command you because your father always hurt you without looking after you. So you identify everyone in authority with your biological father who did not care for you. You need healing by submitting your life to the heavenly father who is kind to the wicked. Luke 6.35 and kind to the ungrateful. A father who gives sunlight and rain equally to the righteous and to the unrighteous. Heavenly father who is a father who forgave and accepted the prodigal son who broke his heart. It is only when you submit your life to the heavenly father and when you take heavenly father as your real father and the heavenly father's character as your character, you receive healing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Anyone who is wounded and hurt or rejected by the biological mother will have generally relationship issues with their mother-in-law because they identify their mother-in-law as their unkind biological mother who did not look after you. So they need healing. Healing from God who said, I am your mother. Can a mother forget your nursing child? Even if she forgets, I will not forget you. I have inscribed you in the palms of my hand. Again, Isaiah 66, 13. Isaiah 66, 13. Like a mother, as a mother comforts her child. You can repeat after me. As a mother comforts her child. So I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. Remember our God is a mother and he can comfort you like a mother. And you will find that you have a mother in God who will never reject you, who will never accuse you, who will never compare you with others. And once you receive that divine love, instead of your parental love, you will become a new creation. You will not accuse anyone because you received that love of God from above, you will not complain. You have received that healing. Praise the Lord. I had the problem of suppressed anger. The first step to receive that inner healing is the first step. Invite Jesus into your present wound, present problem, present crisis. For example, you have this problem of getting angry. You have this problem of uncontrollable, lustful desires. You may have this problem of alcoholism. You have this tendency to watch pornography. You have this problem of having wrong relationship. If you have this problem, if anybody speaks something good, appreciates, you just get attracted to them. You just accept everyone who appreciates and you avoid everyone who gives even a small correction. You don't want to associate with anyone who correct you, who discipline you, who speaks something against you. You avoid, but you connect with only those who appreciate you. If you have these, any of problems, maybe anger, maybe feelings of jealousy, remember, we need healing. Invite Jesus 
into that problem that you face right now. Even the psychology say most of our sicknesses are called psychosomatic diseases. Psycho means mind, soma means body. When your mind is wounded, your body gets sick. I was in Tanzania, I visited Tanzania, and I got malaria. So somebody told me, Father, if you have malaria, but, but malaria comes out in the form of fever, headache, different symptoms. So I had flu, this uh, cough and flu. So they told me not to take any medicine now, first go and check if I have malaria. The moment it was tested positive, I got healed 60%. The moment you know you, are sick, you have particular sickness, you are healed. One day in my community, somebody said, Father, I think I have typhoid. This person is working in my kitchen, and this person is telling, Father, I have typhoid. I cannot work. I have to take rest, and I have to go and check. So I said, you go and test. So in the afternoon when I came, this person is smiling, very happy, doing the work. I said, what happened? She said, I went to the hospital. I said, what happened? Then the test result came that I have no typhoid. So that means you were just pretending to be sick. No, I was suspecting I was sick. The very result that she has no typhoid gave her healing. Devil is a deceiver. He can just tell you that you are good for nothing. You are sick. You are unhealthy. You are defiled. You are a sinner. He can paralyze. Your mind is so connected with your body. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Even there are people who suspect they have cancer. They don't even speak to anyone. They don't eat. They don't sleep. They go to hospital. The test result came out. No cancer. This person started jumping, dancing, smiling. Just one news that you don't have this problem. John chapter 8 verse 32. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Praise the Lord. Let us invite Jesus into your present crisis. Remember, your present problem is rooted in a wound. And your present problem is live in front of Jesus. Remember, your past is present before Jesus. Your past is present before Jesus. What is Past tense for you is present tense for Jesus because he is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the same yesterday, today and forever. There is no scientist who can prove what happened when you were in the womb of your mother. No scientist can prove what happened when you were 12 years old. That particular wound, that particular command, that particular incident that pierced your heart and your memory. Invite Jesus into your present crisis. He's ready to heal you and make you a new creation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And the second stage is ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you the root cause. Reveal to you the root cause. I said, I had suppressed anger. I thought I am all right. And then I found that there are times I get very aggressive, very angry. And even without my choice, I don't want to get angry. And all of a sudden I get angry and I hit one of my friends. I invited Jesus into that problem of suppressed anger. And the second stage, I invited Holy Spirit, asked Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you were from the beginning, you are God. Reveal to me the root cause. Then I came to know that my suppressed anger came even when I was very small. My mother used to beat me, sometimes for wrong things, few times for no reason, because she was angry. So when she beat me for no reason, I was also angry, I also want to beat my mother. But I am small, I can't do that. So I suppressed it inside. 
suppressed anger, the anger I could not express. Sometimes when you go through injustice, you go through some kind of pain, some misunderstanding, and you cannot express it, you suppress it. And it all happened when you are a child, you cannot react, you are helpless. And I invited Holy Spirit into that. And the third step, forgive everyone caused that pain. Maybe you have some uncontrollable, impure imaginations. There may be times somebody misused you. Somebody touched you with an evil intention. And you find that you cannot get out of that because it is rooted in an unforgiveness. I have met a particular candidate in a convent who had severe stomach-related issues. The nuns take this candidate for treatment and they take medicine for a few days, she's all right. Again, this problem is recurring again and again. So they brought this girl for prayers. Through prayer, we came to know she was being sexually misused and she was unable to forgive the one who misused her. It was one of her uncles. She kept it hiding without forgiving, without dealing with this problem. It came out in the form of stomach pain. We asked her to forgive the one who caused this problem. She forgave and she got delivered from this problem of stomach problem. Praise the Lord. Remember, even in spirituality, we have to know, even in, in this world, if you have headache and you take medicine for stomach pain, there is no solution. You will get both headache and stomach problem because you have taken wrong medicine. Devil is always like that. When you have a stomach problem, you may think that it is just related to that stomach. No, it can also be rooted in unforgiveness, hatred, bitterness. It can make your stomach so upset. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So the third step, forgive everyone whom you think caused this problem in your life. Maybe your parents were fighting. They got separated. They were living separate. You were brought up with your uncle, with your aunt. Your uncle did not love you. Your aunt really tormented you. It is your grandmother who brought you up. We need healing. It's an emptiness. It's a sorrow. It's an act of loneliness. It's a pain of rejection. That your, your grandmother may have several times told you, you are not my child. You go back to your mom. Why do you disturb me? I already worked hard. I had many children. You are also coming to increase my burden. Every word, your grandmother, your stepmother, your uncle, your aunt has told you, pierced your heart, and you still carry that in a wound. You still carry that scar inside you. So you behave in the same way sometimes unknowingly. You don't want to behave like this, but you are a victim of that behavior because you have never surrendered that situation at the feet of the Lord. Maybe you are a refugee or a migrant. You have nowhere to sleep. You have no house to stay. You came to this country. You have been rejected by everyone. The same people whom you helped. You have gone through that pain. Sisters and brothers, pour it out before Jesus. He was a migrant. He was a refugee. He lived like a slave. He can take that pain and he can give you talents to heal others.